Hi everyone, this is Andy from Med School EU, and in today's lecture we're going to continue talking about bioenergetics. And now that we know how to produce our organic compound through the process of photosynthesis in organisms that are considered to be photoautotrophs, we're now going to see how that organic compound is going to be broken down in order to produce energy. And this process will be called cellular respiration, and the first step of cellular respiration is glycolysis. So first of all, before we begin looking at the steps of glycolysis, we must do our cellular respiration overview just to see what the process is like, where it occurs, and what is the general reactions that happen in this process. So we first going to begin with just the overall redox reaction of cellular respiration to see what is oxidized and what is reduced, because this is the opposite re reaction of photosynthesis. Because in photosynthesis, we begin with water and carbon dioxide. Remember, we fixate carbon dioxide. And we produce organic compound and release oxygen into the atmosphere. Consumers that are going to consume the energy made by photoautotrophs, they're going to consume this glucose molecule or any other organic compound that is found. And they're going to use oxygen in order to perform this reaction and to get lots and lots of ATP produced along with our water and CO2 that will be released into the atmosphere for the photoautotrophs to pick up and do their cycle. So this all happens in the cycle and the series of reactions. And first we must highlight that the glucose molecule right here is going to be oxidized. So that's oxidation reaction and of course the oxygen into the water is going to be reduced. So we must also know that cellular respiration occurs in three different phases. And the first one, glycolysis, we're going to talk about in detail in today's video. However, following that, there's going to be the process of pyruvate oxidation and the citric acid cycle. And the final stage will be oxidative phosphorylation that occurs on the mitochondrial inner membrane. So that's the electron transport that is going to produce lots and lots of ATP for us. So let's label our primary cellular respiration organelle, and that's going to be the mitochondria. So we must recognize the mitochondria has two membranes. It's got this outer membrane, and we have the inner membrane. And a lot of the reactions will happen within these membranes. We also got the mitochondrial matrix. So it's called matrix here. So what happens is glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. So it occurs outside the mitochondrion and it occurs in, in the cytoplasm of a cell. And what happens is the products of glycolysis are going to enter the matrix of the mitochondria by going through the fusion of the outer membrane and then it's going to use a transporter to get through the inner membrane and it's going to go right into the matrix and in the matrix the second part will happen called pyruvate oxidation as well as the citric acid cycle so the products of pyruvate oxidation will be the the reactants for the citric acid cycle. And this all occurs in the matrix of the mitochondrion. Now, once the products of the citric acid cycle have formed and we get a lot of our um, NADH and FADH2, which uh, are going to be classified as electron carriers, these are going to be hydrolyzed by oxidative phosphorylation on the mitochondrial inner membrane right here on the mitochondrial inner membrane and this whole process is going to be called oxidative phosphorylation. In other words, it is the ETC, electron transport chain. And through that, we're going to produce lots and lots of ATP molecules. So now we're going to take a look at glycolysis and see the steps, all the steps that are involved in glycolysis and how they're catalyzed. And it's important to note that glycolysis, and there are 10 steps, and all 10 steps are catalyzed by enzymes. So enzymes are involved in all of these 10 steps in order for the glycolysis to go through and produce our products, as we're going to see next. So there are 10 steps. However, those 10 steps are divided into two different phases. 
And the first phase is called the energy requiring phase because we need energy in order for this phase to go through. So what we have is one glucose molecule which has six carbons and we're going to produce through five reactions. So this, this has five reactions. So that, that's the first five reactions they're energy requiring because overall you're going to produce two molecules of glyceraldehyde three phosphate. In other words, it is two molecules of G3P, which have three carbons. And in order to do that, we need to hydrolyze two ATP molecules. We need energy in order for this process to happen. So we, we undergo the hydrolysis of ATP, the phosphate will be added onto the molecules, and we produce our G3P molecule. Now, looking at step number two, what we have is another five reactions. And these, uh, these reactions are going to be energy releasing reactions. And what this really means is that we're actually going to produce ATP, we're going to produce energy and it's exergonic and the energy requiring stage is endergonic. It requires energy to get to the products. Here, this happens spontaneously because it is exergonic. And what we have is five reactions where the two molecules of G3P undergo oxidation where the, they are going to lose electrons and protons in order to make two NADH molecules. So as you can see here, the four electrons and four protons are going to be taken away from the two G3P molecules and they're going to produce two NADH. Now at the same time, the ATP is, under, is, is gonna undergo phosphorylation where the phosphate will be taken away from the G3P molecules and is going to produce four ATP. And finally, the G3P is going to become oxidized into two pyruvate molecules and two water molecules. And pyruvate has three carbons. So looking at the summary here, we've got the one glucose molecule that, that is our organic compound that's going to become two pyruvate molecules and two water. However, during this reaction, we also have our four ATP released right here and two ATP consumed and therefore we get a net plus of two ATP and we also get a net plus of two NADH molecules and these are going to be very important for the production of ATP further down into the cellular respiration cycle. So now we're going to take a look at all of these reactions step by step and see exactly which enzymes are involved and what kind of reactions are involved to understand why we get our products. So we're going to take a look at the first five reactions which are energy requiring and the first reaction is going to be glucose molecule or six carbons and they're going to undergo phosphorylation reaction in order to produce glucose six phosphate. So what this really means is that the hexokinase, so kinases uh, are actually the catalytical enzymes that undergo phosphorylation reactions. They contribute the catalysis of phosphorylation reactions. And here we use ATP as our substrate for the phosphate. And the phosphate will be added onto the uh, molecule of glucose producing glucose 6 phosphate. So we just added a phosphate molecule to the sixth carbon of glucose. So just remember, just keep in mind that kinases are the enzymes that catalyze phosphorylation reactions. Now looking at the next step, we take our glucose 6 phosphate and is going to be isomerized into fructose 6 phosphate. So this fructose is an isomer of glucose and therefore it's, it's under, it going to undergo isomerization reaction through the enzyme called phosphoglucomutase. So don't worry about the phosphogluco, you should worry about the mutase. You must know the mutase typically catalyzes isomerization reactions. Now looking at the next step, we take our fructose 6-phosphate and it's going to be transformed into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So what this really means is we added another phosphate molecule and that means we used a kinase enzyme. Kinase enzymes, again, they catalyze the reactions of 
phosphorylation. So here again, we use an ATP molecule in order to phosphorylate our fructose 6-phosphate and add another phosphate to the molecule here. And now looking at the fourth step of the reaction, what we actually have is, is we, we, have, we take our fructose 1,6-bisphosphate and it's, it's going to undergo a split reaction. So it's going to split into a G3P and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. So what this really is, it's a hydrolysis reaction. So it's hydrolysis reaction. And typically this reaction is going to be catalyzed by an enzyme called aldolase that's going to split the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into G3P molecule and this dihydroxyacetone phosphate. And we're going to see what happens to this dihydroxyacetone phosphate in the next step. However, you should recognize that we, we have our G3P molecule and from the previous slide, we know that we got to produce two molecules of G3P at the end of the five steps. So looking at the next step, the final step of the energy requiring phase, is that we're going to use an isomerase enzyme in order to transform our dihydroxyacetone phosphate into a G3P molecule. So as you can see, now we have, we have uh, made our two G3P molecules and we have hydrolyzed, we have taken two ATP molecules, one, two right here. So this is what we're left with at the end of the first part energy requiring phase of glycolysis. So now that we have made our two molecules of G3P, we're going to take a look at glycolysis steps 6 to 10, which are energy producing steps. And uh, here's what we got. So in step 6, we take our G3P. So here, again, just to point out right away is that all of these reactions will be happening twice because we have two molecules of G3P. In the previous first five steps, we only had the one glucose molecule, so they only happen once. Now here in the last five steps, we're going to have these reactions occur two times. So what we got is our G3P molecule and it's, on, it's going to undergo the first redox reaction of glycolysis. And what we have is the enzyme dehydrogenase is going to catalyze this uh, redox reaction. So what we have is G3P is going to be oxidized into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and NAD plus is going to be reduced into NADH and a proton will be released as well. And we're also going to add on an inorganic phosphate to our molecule. Now in the second step, we take our 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate and it's going to produce three phosphoglycerates. So we're going to remove a phosphate molecule. And here what's going to happen is something called substrate level phosphorylation. So this is one way, one of the primary ways ATP is made in cellular respiration by the process called substrate level. I'm going to write it down, substrate level phosphorylation phosphorylation and substrate level phosphorylation simply means that a ATP is produced by the means of of a substrate so what we have is our 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate the kinase remember is going to add a phosphate onto the ATP it's going to catalyze this reaction and the phosphate is going to be removed from our organic compound and it's going to be left off with just the 3 phosphoglycerate. Now looking at the next step, the 3 phosphoglycerate is going to undergo a mutase reaction, which is shifting of a chemical group to another within the same molecule. So again, we have our phosphate at carbon 3 on the glycerate and it's going to be shifted over to carbon 2 of the glycerate and pretty much nothing else happens. That's what mutases are known for, is they're known for isomerization reactions and these mutase reactions, which simply means shifting of a chemical group or a functional group. Now next, we have our 2-phosphoglycerate 
that is going to undergo another redox reaction where water is going to be produced and a PAP molecule. And PAP stands for phosphoenol pyruvate. And this is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme called enolase. And enolase is going to produce water as a side product of the reaction. And finally, in step number 10, we're going to have another substrate level phosphorylation. So whenever ATP is produced, that is not on the electron transport chain, on, not on the ETC, we call it substrate level phosphorylation. So here we have another substrate level phosphorylation, and of course it's going to be catalyzed by a kinase enzyme, where the PEP molecule is going to be converted into pyruvate, where the, the phosphate is going to be lost to ATP, and this is why we produce an ATP molecule right here. And finally, we produce our pyruvate, which is the final product of glycolysis, with three carbons being the backbone of the molecule. And remember, these reactions occur two times, so they happen twice for each G3P. Therefore, we produce two pyruvate molecules per glucose molecule. So this concludes our video on glycolysis, which is the first part of cellular respiration. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at the next two steps of cellular respiration, which will involve the pyruvate oxidation plus the citric acid cycle. And finally, we're going to take a look at oxidative phosphorylation.